haters can't stand us. Left hand up. Who are we? The commanders. 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 We fight for all DC. Who are we? The commanders. 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 Left hand up. Who are we? Yeah, yeah. What's up, everyone? This is Sergeant Don Suave. Welcome to the Washington Ballroom News. So right now, I want y'all all to pay attention, open your ears, listen with your eyes. As we run down the assignment, we're going to go down the blueprint. We're going to go over the week two recap. We will go over the week three predictions. I also going to give my keys to victory. So let's go ahead. Open your textbooks. Go to page one. And let's, let's start the show. So, I'm going to start off by saying this. It's been 84 years. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But, real talk. It's been 12 years since the Washington franchise was 2-0. and Let's put that in retrospect. Gas prices was hot. It was three fifty three a gallon. Top songs were Roller in the Deep by Adele, Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO, Katy Perry had two songs that was number one, Firework and E.T. And with one of my favorite songs at number six was Bruno Mars' Grenade. Oh, I would go through all this pain, could through my brain, yes I would do. And Washington starting quarterback was Rex Grossman. Don't make me repeat that. So to recap the game, that history was in the balance with the Broncos was leading 21-3 in the second quarter. And once again, you had the feeling of... But what I have noticed is maybe this is a different Washington team. Because usually when Washington is down, coming back to victory is as rare as seeing a meteorite in the sky. Oh. Well, yes, after being down 21-3, Washington was starting to come back in the second quarter. Going to the half, scoring a touchdown, converting a two-point conversion, and kicking a field goal, bringing the game from 21-3 to 21-14. Now, this is what makes a great team great, is adjustments. And this was different, because they went in the half down by seven and scored 21 points in the second half, while Denver only scored 12. But it won't all pieces of cream, though. Because with, with very few seconds left in the fourth quarter, and Denver has the ball, Russell threw a Hail Mary, and anyone who's anyone who knows or played football knows when the ball's in the air, you knock it down. Nope. Nah. Apparently, our defense wanted that incentive for interceptions, but because trying to catch it. Bounced through a player's helmet and landed on one of the Broncos receivers who caught the tip pass. Touchdown. So now, I done ran from the back thinking the game is over and all I hear is a loud cheer. Now don't get me wrong, I know some of our fans travel. Shout out to uh, Washington Road Warrior. Shout out to the Hall Farmers, Chris. Shout out to Raleigh Captain. But I'm pretty sure it was more Broncos fans than Commanders fans. So, I saw that play, and I was like... Huh? <sighs> okay. So it's 35-33. And Russell Wilson rolls to his right, throws a pass, and broken up by Benjamin St. Juice. And the game is over. Washington wins by two, 35-33. And yes, I know it was controversy at the end. But in the words of, it sounded like T.I. 
Hey, let's be clear. That call could have been a bang bang situation. You really want to see a pass interference or defense holding? Oh, don't worry about it. Last year, just turn on Washington going against the Giants squad. And that cornerback that was hugging Curtis Samuel, and he didn't even take him to dinner. So all in all, you could say one thing. A win is a win. A win is a win. I don't care what y'all say. A win. Now, as individual stacks are, they it was it was a pretty good showing on the offense. For instance, Sam Howell went 27 for 39, 299 yards. Cause they said they said this gave a screen pass, some for that one yard, but anywho. Two touchdowns, zero interceptions, with a 108.8 QBR. Brown Robinson Jr. had a breakout game. Even though he didn't have 100 yards, he still carried the ball with a decent amount of yards, 18 for 87, and he had two touchdowns. Sam spread the ball around with 10 people catching the ball, with the leading catcher, receiver Terry McLaurin catching a beautiful pass thrown to him, splitting two defenders. Now remember, I spoke about the defense last last week, last segment, and also Chase Young coming back. What he do? Well, Chase Young, because I'm glad you asked. He had three tackles, one one and a half sacks, two quarterback hits, and one tackle for loss. Now, as far as for the other defensive linemen, the other members of the Fantastic Four all played a part in the defense. Sweat had one and a half sacks. Payne had one sack. Jonathan Allen had three tackles. It was a total of seven sacks on Russell Wilson, with Jamin Davis having one, Casey Tuhill having one, and James Smith Williams having one. And to finalize the game, the defensive game, Emmanuel Forbes added Russell Wilson to that Forbes list after getting an interception. And to me, Emmanuel Forbes was another steal for the Commanders. Because I remember when the draft happened, and a few people didn't want to the one the commanders to draft him. But as you can see, for the since the preseason and going into the season, he's proven himself. Now that's the individual stats. So what about the team stats? Because we all know the NFL is a team game. I want to touch on that in the red zone. Washington was three for three, while Denver was two for four. That means the Stonewall defense prevailed for the commanders. Here's an important, con important stat. Zero turnovers. And it had seven minutes or more possessions than the Broncos. But, with the good, you got to take the bad. And the bad is this. They ne it needs to be taken care of for the next game. Because you're going against a tough Buffalo Bills team. Penalties. Washington had eight penalties for 71 yards. Anytime you have that many penalties and almost a hundred yards of penalized, that's a recipe top notch, top priority, you know, Gordon Ramsay size L. But all in all, this game really puts a smile on my face. Because the standard is that if y'all get down, we can finally believe y'all can come back and win the game. And Denver's defense isn't anything to write away. They have a good, a good defense. And to put up 35 points and a win is beautiful. Now that's a recap of week two. Now we're on to week three. And this is week three. Week three is going to be a test. Like a real test. Against a high-powered Super Bowl contending Buffalo Bills at FedEx Field. This is definitely a statement game. Can you come out and win this game? And, you know, sadly, if you lose, can you make it into a game, of course? Which the worst case scenario is that if they get cooked, well done, flame boil on the grill. And then the respect goes that back right back down. You know, even though our backs may not be on the wall as we you know we say, but technically, we were watching this 2 0. Washington beat the Cardinals and the Broncos. Anybody that's in it, it will criticize will say, well, Washington didn't beat a really good team. You know, they beat a team that's supposed to be tanking. They beat another team that hasn't looked good since last year. So, I knowing Ron Rivera, knowing Eric Bianami, they should be talking to their players, letting them know 
you win this Sunday, your respect level is going to shoot through the roof. And then maybe you actually get respect to NFL Network. Maybe you actually get respect to ESPN on first take and all this stuff that wants to put Washington third or fourth place. Be the team like the Bills. Be the team that literally is a Super Bowl contender and watch that respect go up. Now, as far as injuries, we have one of the biggest ones, which is tight end Logan Thomas, who will be out of the game. So, Cole Turner, time to step up. Hodges, time to step up. And here is my keys to victory. My key to victory is simply get to Josh Allen. And don't let him scramble because he can't run and he runs angry. You know, a lot, you know, you got these quarterbacks running, run the slide, run about. This man will try to run and try to at least get a couple yards by going through you. So don't, so get to him early, rattle him early. Number two, tone down the penalties, the mental, the mental mistakes. Because unlike Denver, Buffalo can win games, they can finish games. Buffalo got weapons. And Buffalo also got defense as well. I know it's hard. Penalties is going to happen, but try. I'll say the key is try your best not to let those obvious ones happen. Third one, let Arab enemy be Arab enemy, which means he's has experience of beating Buffalo. Honestly, look at them games with the Chiefs and the Buffalo. It's been one of the greatest greatest games, and they even changed the overtime rule because of that. Whatever is trick plays, short passes to let up, to set up the long game. Absolutely. Pause. Whatever it is, let it loose. And lastly, it may not be sexy, it may not be cute, it may not be pretty, or whatever type of adjective you can think of. Establish the run. One thing we know about the NFL, a lot of defensive teams are not built to stop the run because the NFL is, 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 is as dumb as it can be at times it's, it looks like it's trying to phase out the running back there's a whole segment with different uh, commentators broadcasts saying about the running back position and it does seem like sometimes they try to fade away or they're trying to change the running back to be you know a b-roll receiver but for this game establish the run B. Rob showed last game that he can handle majority of snaps, so let him run and block for him to calm the storm, to calm the storms of the Bills defense. Cause they're already looking. I gotta check Terry McLaurin. I gotta take care of Jahan Dotson. Watch out for Curtis Samuel. See, they already is thinking of that. So when you have Brian Robinson the running back, that. Eight in the box, that 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 four in the box, that five in the box could turn to eight in the box. Once again, what it sets up for, play action. There you, that's it. Now my final score for this, I am judging how Washington has played. Judging how this game could basically be a statement game. Judging how also how Bills just basically smacked around the Raiders. I'm going to go with another high-powering, high-scoring game. 28-24, the Commanders. Now, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to finish up the meeting, we're going to wrap this presentation up, and we're going to go by our day. All right, everyone, go get, go hit the vending machine up, go drink your coffee, come right back to the ballroom news. Come back and listen to Sergeant Suave as we finish up this meeting. Chicken, 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 Italian spicy bacon, chicken. Take one bite and it all starts clicking. Crown of my day. Toasted on a tasty royal sauce. Got me buzzing, I'm the royal boss. Sauce it up and top it with Mars. Chicken my way. You roll your season today at BK. All right, y'all. The meeting's over. So, thank y'all for participating. Thank y'all for listening. And come back next week 
this boardroom, we're gonna do it all over again. First and foremost, like the video, share the video, comment down. This is the boardroom news, y'all, with Sergeant Suave. Also, if you're listening on podcasts, like, share, subscribe, network. It's all love. All right. So until next meeting, meeting has been adjourned. This is Sergeant Suave signing off. I'll see you guys next week. Those haters can't stand us. Left hand up. Who are we? The commanders. 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 We fight for RDC. Who are we? The commanders. 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 Left hand up. Who are we? Yeah.